Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's episode of Truth Bumps. Um, thank you for joining. Oh, let me make sure I get my comments up. Hi. So uh, tonight we are going to talk about how we can use divination tools to help us grow and expand our psychic abilities. And I want to address some of the different things that I've personally heard and maybe take any questions that you have on the things that you've heard to eliminate any myths that you may have heard or misconceptions about divination tools. So just check in. Hi, hi, Julie. Hi, Danny. Hi, Barbara. Hi, everyone. So glad that you guys could join. Thank you. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I you've tuned into the right channel. <laughs> um, hi, Jen. Um, so I actually, when I started my journey with psychic abilities over 20 years ago, oh my God, I can't believe it's been that long already. Um, I started with tarot. Um, and I was, it was one of those things where it just crossed my path and I really, really resonated with it, but I wouldn't know until many years down the road why I resonated with it so much. So we'll cover uh, a little bit more about tarot, what it is, how I used it, my experiences, and take any questions you have on it. Um, and we'll go into examples of several other different types of tools um, that are historically or even modern day divination tools that you might be able to use if you are curious and just experimenting. Hi, Greg. Hi, Megan. So glad you guys could join. Thank you, everyone. So when we talk about divination tools, the really, really super important thing to remember is that this is all in an exploration of fun. And so we are just looking to experiment. And the moment we get a little too, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a little too tied to the um, expectation of the outcome, that's when it's probably time to put it away and just kind of have fun with something else before you pick it back up. So that's just my little disclaimer on divination tools. Don't take it too seriously. It's more about just discovering yourself and having fun with it as psychic abilities should be. So personally, um, when I started with tarot, I think it can get a little intimidating because a lot of people think, oh my gosh, you have to learn the meaning and definitions of so many cards. Um, so what I learned through tarot, we'll start with that. And I'm, what I'm trying to do off screen is get my traditional deck out. Hi, Nate. Um, this is an example of the, the Rider weight deck. Um, this is a uh, classic deck and the imagery on it um, is really good for beginners because the way that it's divided up is fairly simple um, to break it down into smaller chunks. And so it doesn't have to be as um, intimidating as learning 78 whole cards before you can read for yourself or anyone. Um the uh, traditional tarot is divided into it in a couple of ways. You've got your major arcana and your minor arcana. Arcana is a word for secrets, um, but it doesn't have to be that secretive or taboo sounding. The major arcana are um, cards that are um, like your chariot, your sun, the star, the high priestess, the magician, emperor, the world, or wheel of fortune. Um, these tend uh, to um, represent larger life things. And I don't want to go into a deep dive, just kind of giving you a general explanation or overview. And then the minor arcana is more about... Um, it's divided up into four suits. You've got your wands, swords, cups, and pentacles. And each one of those represents a different element. 
And each one of those goes from ace um, of that suit all the way up through a king. So ace to 10, and then you've usually got a knight. I'm sorry, first it's the page, knight, queen, and king. With that in mind, the way that I use this to um, really dive into my psychic abilities, what I had started to see unfold is that once I really started to learn just a couple of keywords for the cards, then I started to get messages beyond the cards themselves. And that's where it really tunes in and turns into um, knowing um, or getting, starting to get your own impressions through your abilities. So well, the few things that I've heard that I want to address about tarot is that, um, uh, in the, especially in the magic or the witch community, there, uh, there's a very old, old, um, belief that you can't get your own tarot, that you can't buy it, that someone has to gift it to you. Um, and I wanted to just, just, it, knock that out of the park. Like if, especially if you're just using it for psychic abilities, there's no rule of thumb that says that the tarot doesn't find you on your, you know, in your path in this day and age that it has to be gifted to you. In fact, I got um, this deck from a Barnes and Noble. So uh, it works beautifully. <laughs> I encourage anyone uh, that if you feel called to practice with a tarot deck to go out and, uh, get your own and just experiment with it. There's also a couple of great free re resources online um, that I'll share at the end of the show that kind of just gives you a little bit more around the keywords of each card. So when I first started reading tarot, what I really enjoyed about it, but didn't understand at the time why, is that it was allowing me to connect to my intuition. And it was allowing me to develop the, the muscle behind getting psychic impressions and relaying messages to other people and giving them um, the information that they needed. So uh, what started off was I would shuffle and I would um, set the cards out in the reading and the assigned questions. And then I at first would start pouring through the book and the definition and al almost reading it verbatim. And then um, what I started practicing doing is I would read for myself and instead of going immediately to the book right away, I would sit with a card and look at it until I got any impressions or messages of my own. So when we do that, what we're looking for is when you, oh, here we go. When you're looking at a card, you're seeing that there are so many different elements in the card. Um, and what you'll notice is that over time, something will pop out to you uh, that you've never um picked up on before quite as strongly. Like right now, looking at this through the screen, the snake on the side here is popping out to me. It's probably because um, my little animal spirit guide is telling me, hi, I'm here. But um, and then you want to ask yourself, okay, if that is the, the thing that's coming out to me, whether it's an animal or a collar, or maybe it's the way someone looks in the photo, how is that making you feel? Um, how does that, like if you sit with that for a little bit, what messages are coming up for you around that piece of information? And so it sounds really simplistic, like, oh, Devin, that is just a little too good to be true. It can't be as easy as just sitting and waiting for the answers to come, but it really works that way. Um, what I like to do or what I had um, started to do then is that once I started getting my own messages around the cards is that I would take a hybrid. So I would know enough about the card just to get like one or two keywords. And then I would uh, craft my message between the card and the intuitive thoughts that I had gotten. So today, if you were to practice with tarot, one of the things that I would recommend is literally um, taking your deck, 
shuffling it. There's no right or right, wrong way to shuffle. And lay your cards out and sit with them. What impressions do you get? How do you feel? Um, if you often hear messages, what messages do you are you hearing at this time? Um, and take a note and write it down. Journal on the messages you're getting around this card. And then to test your abilities, go back to the description in the book or online, whichever you're using. Every tarot deck usually comes with a book with descriptions. Um, and then, like I said, there's, if you were to just do tarot descriptions on Google, like the amount of information is amazing. Um, but take that description and bump it up against the messages you got and see how it's the same and see how it's different. I don't expect it to be exactly word for word. Some of it's going to be interpreted um, a little bit differently, and that's okay, especially when we're working with intuition because everyone's connection to source is unique and individual to them as long as they're setting the intention to be like a humble messenger and just allow the information to come through without ego, whatever messages you get are the right ones. We'll go into that a little bit. Uh, we'll go more into that in a little bit. Um, we had an example today where it's always good to just do a little double check. But um, so back to, you know, taking time with the cards noticing any impressions you get, and then um, bumping that back to the um, explanation is an amazing way to start incorporating your intuition. What you'll find over time is that you will rely less and less on the definitions and more and more on the messages that you just naturally get. I don't know why tonight, but my glasses are just like really bothering me. So, um, yeah, yeah, Jen, we did. <laughs> we did have an example. Um, <clears throat> so then what happens is once you get more and more comfortable reading intuitively instead of by the book, um, You'll be able to, you know, read more fluently and you're practicing and developing that connection directly. And really what you're doing is you're building your trust in yourself, which is really what all of this comes back to is building our trust. Because I personally believe that we're getting psychic messages every day, every one of us, even when we don't feel connected. And it's just about trusting ourselves enough to be able to be aware of what we're getting, what we're picking up on. And take it for face value with uh, the caveat of doing just a double check on. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so then for me personally, when I first started reading, um, giving psychic readings professionally, I would do it with the um, option to include tarot because I felt comfortable with it and it felt safe. But it really only took just a little bit of time to shift and understand that the messages that I were getting were more intuitive. And I was actually feeling held back by the messages in the tarot card because it would be like I'm sitting there trying to fit the messages that I'm getting into the definitions that I knew um, that the tarot card meant. So as you're doing this work and um, with any of the tools that you're practicing tonight, when your intuition is telling you one thing and that feels true and absolute, and it's not fear-based and it's supportive and it's loving, but it doesn't match the traditional definition of the cards, that's when you might start feeling a transition away from uh, reading with the cards and more into a psychic reading. And you can use um, these abilities to do, it doesn't, you know, I. you can do all sorts of kinds of readings with any of the uh, tools that we're talking about tonight. I've used tarot to do business planning before. I've used tarot to help me plan vacations before. It doesn't have to be about telling the future. It's not just about, you know, seeing what might 
happen. It's about knowing what your options are and um, being able to take a very educated free will choice, make a decision from that. So um, what else on tarot? Uh, when you're picking out your tarot, if you're just getting started, I do again recommend the Rider weight deck just because it is one that is normalized um, um, the most across the resources that are available to you to learn from. But there are um, other kinds of tarot. Um, here is a deck where um, the, the, the images and the way that it's broken up is a little bit different than the traditional Rider weight. And in fact, they break it up um, in, against the different elements. So even though like these pictures are beautiful to pick up different um, because they're so detailed and variated, the, um, the different symbolism in them and the colors are really great um, to work with intuitively. If you're just trying to learn um, what it is to work with tarot in general, it can be a little intimidating, overwhelming. Um, whatever you decide to do, there's no right or wrong answer. Again, just um, pick one and kind of stick with it or you'll find yourself um, getting a little frustrated and maybe lost. So um, similar to tarot, we have these beautiful oracle cards, um, like the ones that Sharon reads for us every Tuesday night. And what um, Carly reads for us uh, Thursday nights. And um, they're a little bit different than tarot. In fact, they would not normally be my first choice for a tool to work on um, psychic abilities specifically. That's just me. There's nothing wrong with it. Had it not been for an experience I just actually had over the summer. Um, so... Uh, Oracle cards are going to be very different um, from deck to deck. And there's no set way that they're broken up. There's no, um, they're a lot more free form. Uh, Oracle cards are very loving and supportive, which is personally why I love them. If tarot is kind of like the sister um, that's going to give you some hard love sometimes. Oracle's kind of like your loving grandma that's going to sit you down with some cookies and say, listen, child, we have some information to talk about. Um, uh, Oracle card will always have like a keyword description and then a little summary on the card. And then each deck will come with its own book that gives you more details around um, the cards that you pull. These are fantastic um, to also work with uh, if you're just looking for a quick message from your angels or your guides. I use Oracle sometimes if I'm just looking for a little pick-me-up. It just always seems to be the information that I need in that moment. And again, it works the same way as Tarot. You shuffle, um, you can do a single card pull, or you can actually do a, a Tarot or a um, card spread where each space is a different um part of the question. Uh, I love the love that's in the in the chat, guys. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you so much for you. And you're um, so, so nice. Thank you. James of Gaia Tarot deck. Yes, Nate, I have that one too. Um, it is very non-traditional, but oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it has a lot of shamanistic um, attributes to it. And uh, there's a lot of decks out there that are a little bit um, otherworldly, but it's amazing if you're like tapping into your intuition and just getting impressions off of the beautiful imagery. And I have some tarot decks that I actually don't even read from. I don't like to read from them because the energy that it gives off is just not my jam. Um, but I just, I, I got them because I love the imagery. It's beautiful, beautiful artwork. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon, I love you too. Um, oh, Barbara, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Nate, I do. I um, It is absolutely stunning. And these really are pieces of art. Um, 
uh, you know, a lot of times artists will work with um, spiritual uh, leaders or students to do a combination between the artwork and then writing up the divination messages between it. Very good. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I love you all so much. Um, okay, so funny story. Um, over the summer, I did my first tarot party. And um, this was a bridal shower, a tarot and tea bridal shower that was um, really cool to do. Very, I loved, um, I loved the, the theme of it. And um, the bride wasn't sure that everyone joining would be comfortable with tarot. So I said, hey, I've got some beautiful Oracle decks. I can give them that option as well. Um, and so there were a few that chose um, this Oracle deck. And I had never read for someone else on Oracle professionally. So we just gave it a wing. And I um, did kind of like a, a three card spread of what do you need to know now? What are the, what, um, or, you know, current situation, what do you need to know? And next steps to get there. And I'm reading for this individual. And I remember I took the information off the cards, but I was also going, giving some intuitive advice as well, which is really common. And I actually told her, I said, yeah, it looks like, I was giving her this reading and I was telling her about like um, an endeavor or an initiative. And I said, for example, if you wanted to open up your own bakery, this is a great time to do it. And her jaw just dropped. She said, my daughter and I have actually been talking about opening up our own bakery. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, okay. I can't make this stuff up. Um, so intuitive messages will absolutely come through um, in the Oracle cards, just as they will tarot. Um, the way I would recommend doing that is, again, journaling. So if you're looking at, a, at an oracle card, just sitting with it long enough, you may not be getting impressions from the images as much as you would tarot. But if you sit with it long enough and you give it some time and some space for the messages to come to you, I bet you'll get some information that you can journal about and then you can go back to in the future and kind of double check on it. Um... It's a really great question, Sharon. No, not all tarot cards or decks are the same. So you have what I call a traditional, where you've got major and minor arcana, and then the minor arcana is divided into four suits. And within those four suits, you've got your aces to 10, and then your, um, your royalty suits, your pages, your knights, your queens, and your kings. And... Um, some of the some of the non-traditional cards like like these I had out earlier, they're not divided up like that. And um, they'll have their own they'll have their own like philosophy that'll be explained in the book that they come with. So if you were going to pick up a deck for tarot and start playing around with it, I would recommend something more like the Rider Weight deck. Um, and there's another deck. I'll list some on my um, on my business page. Some examples of traditional decks that follow the Rider Waite deck. Um, I've got a couple of other decks that are pretty similar, but the images are a little bit more modern. That might speak to you as well. Um, And let's see here. So I'm just reading through the comments. Here, there are three patterns, A, B, and C. Has become the standard. B and C appear in limited editions or specials, Terra Novo. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and that standard deck would have 78 cards. Um, and so if you guys are interested in doing a more in-depth tarot discussion, I can dedicate one of the future shows to tarot and go more into how um, the different types of tarot decks, some examples of that, and how that traditional, like the Rider White, is broken down into and go into some of the meanings behind major and minor arcana versus the four different suits. So just let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. I'll make that happen. Um, 
So there are also different, like a million and one different types of Oracle cards. Like here's one I have on um, Halloween, uh, which is just a really fun and beautiful deck. Um, not as descriptive in its booklet as the other one, but it's just fun. Like here's the back of it and like um, some of the things that you have here. Where's a fun card? Here's a cauldron. Um, here's a here's a werewolf. Um, and each one of those will have its own little uh, description in the booklets. Um, but again, you would you know kind of tap into this uh, through your intuition um, to test that out and, and and practice with that. All right. So, I don't want to lose track. I'm working with limited space here. Sorry, everyone. Awesome. Awesome. I'll definitely make that happen, Sharon. Cool. Thank you. Um, another tool that we can use in divination is a pendulum. And um, pendulums are um, usually uh, made from a type of crystal stone. I've got a couple I couldn't find tonight. So this one's kind of like um, stone chips and resin, but they're always hanging from a chain. And this one's got little, um, little pieces of other stones in it. This is more like a chakra. I think this was intended for the different chakras. You can see if anyone caught Jen's show, Simply Spirit last Sunday, she did an amazing discussion on the chakras. And um, these are the different colors from, uh, from the chakras. So um, the way that you would use a pendulum is more for like yes or no. But the reason why I like pendulum in developing our abilities is because it puts us in that right frame of mind and it allows us to focus on something to be still enough to hear messages. So um, when I first started out, well, the way that you use a pendulum is you want to rest your elbow. Well, and of course, you can't see it. But typically, my elbow's not rested on anything right now. Let's see if I can do a little bit of rearranging here. I know I'm making a lot of noise. All right, here we go. Hey. Um, you would want to rest your elbow usually on something and then just give this a chance to kind of come to a still point. And my elbow, my arm's moving all over the place, but usually your arm will not be moving all over the place. And you come to a still point and you can actually just clear your mind, take a couple deep breaths. Um, with any tool, I always recommend grounding and protecting. So we've talked about... Um, you know, clearing our space with um, imagining uh, water coming over us and then protecting ourselves with a white light bubble. Um, but you can use this pendulum to start asking yes or no questions. And so as it comes to still, we're not going to do an actual reading tonight, but as it comes to still, and you're protected, you would ask, um, please show me yes. And eventually this will start moving one way or another. And you know, let's see, there it goes. And you know that that is going to be your response for yes for this session. This is my guide doing this tonight. He's like, there you go. He's helping me out with an example. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> and then you would say, okay, please show me no. And you would give it enough time to stop. Um, and then it would change direction. And that would be your no for the evening. Um, so uh, I have seen them rotate clockwise versus counterclockwise for yes or no. I've seen yes be one way, no be another. I've seen um, movement be uh, an indicator for yes and stillness be an indicator for no. There's no right or wrong. 
way to you, you know, to, to set up the responses for this with your pendulum. The important thing is, is that, um, you know, I always like to ask if I'm working with someone of love and light and if they'll tell me the truth. Um, but I think there'd be some people, like I can hear some people in my head right now, like if they're not going to tell you the truth, they're going to lie to you. But um, I've heard some say that there are some, I don't know, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. But I think as long as you're protected and you're at a high vibrance, uh, vibration, it's always going to be, it's always going to be a positive experience. So when I first started practicing with my intuition on this, um, <clears throat> I would open up a session, I'd get a yes or no, and then I'd start asking things like, um, did I know you in this lifetime? And if it was a no, then I'd ask things like, are you my angel? Or are you an ancestor? Are you my guide, my spirit guide? And depending on the response, I would start whittling it down. So it's almost like a game of are you a loaf of bread? <laughs> or are you bigger than a bread box is what I meant. Um, only with yes or no questions. And it would get to the point for me, um, at first, you would just uh, continue on through um, getting your yes or no answers and just sitting with the vibrations of the session and be happy with that, that you've made contact and that you're getting messages, right? And so then eventually I would want to take it further. And uh, after I whittled it down <clears throat> to know who I was talking to, I would ask them, would you prefer to communicate with me through the pendulum or should we go to automatic writing? And it got to the point where, like, one time my grandfather and, uh, or I, I was reaching out to my grandfather and he wanted to do automatic writing and he had a whole message for me through automatic writing. And all I did was I quietly put the pendulum down. I, I had a, a notepad next to me and I just started writing exactly what came to my head. And in that session, my aunt, um, my paternal aunt had actually come to me and she had messages for me and my father. Um, and it was actually a really cool session. Not every session is going to be outstanding like that. That's that's just sometimes how um, these abilities work. But connecting and being present um, is always going to be uh, part of the, the gig. So whether you choose to do like an automatic writing combo or not, um, I would, again, continue to journal your sensations, uh, document what you notice, what questions did you ask, what was your yes and no movements, um, because if you, if you document them, then you can actually, it's almost like a scientific research, right? You can go back to it down the road and be like, oh, that question I asked actually came true, or it didn't, it happened like this. You know, we could ask again today, why, why didn't it? Um, turn out the way they said it would and see what responses you get today. It's all about experimentation and not being afraid to understand that the messages that you get today are subject to free will. There's a million and one different ways that free will in the universe can come to play. Um, and it's okay uh, if the messages that you get today are not quite the way that they play out. Now, this is probably a good time to just briefly, I don't want to go into the details, but we had an example today where there was some media on a different app that was shared with me or with us. And this media um, was someone who got a message that was kind of disturbing, right? It was about, um, about, it was almost like prophecy levels about an argument that happened up in the celestial stars last night and things were reorganized and deconstructed. And the ending of the message was, so check in with your guides or check in with your higher self because you're on your own. I uh, fully believe that this person thought that they were getting like a, a, you know, a message that was, that was true. But I think when we're working with divination and psychic abilities, we always, always, always owe it to ourselves to question what doesn't make sense. So um, remember when we were in 
uh, school and we were going through math and especially in algebra, they said, listen, if your answer doesn't make sense, you're, it's wrong. It's got to, it, it has to, there's go back to the equation because there's something there that is not fitting. So like if you had four plus four and all of a sudden you got an answer of a hundred that logically doesn't make sense, you got to go back and double check your work. Um, so especially when we're talking about spirituality and our relationship to God and the other side, any message that promotes separation, separation from ourselves and our soul, separation from ourselves and God in heaven, separation from ourselves and our guides, that is always a big red flag for me because we are never, ever, 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 ever separated. Um, that's, I would say that's like being separated from your arm, but that can actually happen. We can't be separate from the powers above. Powers above meaning God and angels and our guides. So anytime that you hear information in the community that immediately makes you question or perk up, uh, don't be afraid to question that. Uh, and you don't have to be a dramatic about it. You don't have to make a big deal about it because I do believe that um, that brings us down into a lower energy. But you can take that away silently and just double check with yourself and your guides. Or um, Scotty's got some great suggestions. Um, you can talk to someone. Uh, Psychics Unite is always available if you have questions. We are absolutely thrilled to be talking about um anything that you have on your mind, uh, because we want to make sure that we're, you know, offering the right messages and the love and the support that's out there. So, um, and I, I agree with Scotty, like, you will get a certain amount of sensations in your body with a message that is unadulterated and pure and true. Um, so we 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 want to we want to practice our abilities and get to the point where we are trusting ourselves. But we're never want to get to the point where we trust ourselves so much that when something comes across that is fear-based or doesn't support connection um or uh indicates that we're just on our own, that's immediately something that we want to kind of question again. So um, I know Scotty, Jen, myself, um, Sharon, Greg, there's, there's lots of members of Psychics Unite that would be more than happy uh, to, to offer that support if you ever run into a scenario like that. So never be afraid to reach out and say, hey, I had this experience. I'm trying to understand what I'm experiencing. Um, I could use a little insight and support. We can always use that, um, all of us. There are times where um, I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. There are times where I'm like, I think it's this, but I, uh, I'm i hitting Jen up like, you know, what do you think? It's all part experimentation. Um, so be open to the messages you get, but understand that messages from the other side, from our guides, our, our higher selves, our loved ones, they're always going to be full of love. Um, they're not going to be of a separation, doom and gloom, things ending. It's just going to be how you can better show up for yourself and for other people and spread that love and to serve. Um, so enough on that. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. There's some amazing people on tonight that can also help to answer, um, take advantage of this. If you have any questions about how to navigate any of the messages that you get when working with tools. And I'm going to see if I just uh, missed any questions here. Oh, that's funny. I don't think that's a coincidence. Of course, I never believe in coincidences. Um, I think that's your guide's way of saying um, this, this is here for you if you want to use it. 
um, you also have the option of doing a direct contact with us and a direct link with us, which is actually um, what I'll be covering a little bit more in next week's show about um, spirit guides. So um, I love that. I think it's a little game being played by your spirit guides and your loved ones. Um, I'd be curious to I'd be curious to hear about uh, what kind of feelings you get when you find it in the moment that you need it. And I think that's awesome. Oh, that is so cool. Um, yeah, I, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of uses for pendulums. I have heard that you can use pendulums to find missing things. Uh, if you like missed, if you've got a missing shoe, you can draw a crude map of your house and um, slowly move the pendulum over it, very slowly. And the moment it starts spinning, uh, that's the area that you're supposed to be able to find the missing item. I think it has, you know, it depends on, um, obviously anytime that you're working with these tools, it depends on where you're at emotionally and vibrationally. Um, but I have also heard about um, th the different ways that you can use pendulums to, um, tell the, the, the baby and what kind of baby you're having. I think that's so sweet. Um, uh, oh, um, so uh, right now, my favorite tarot deck, I, I love the really out there ones, but I don't always love to read with them. So to read with the tarot deck, um, I have been using um, this Rider Waite deck, the, the more traditional one, or uh, a deck that uh, follows that same kind of suit. Um, and down the road when I do like a deeper dive into tarot, I'll show some more examples of what I'm talking about there. Um, but I also love some of the crazy out there ones. And I've got some... I've got some that are really abstract. I like the abstract ones because every time I look at it, I'm seeing something different, which allows me to get the intuitive messages behind what I'm seeing. So um, I just, I love all tarot. It's like asking me what kind of, what's my favorite music? I kind of love all music, but um, that's been my experience. If anyone else has experience with tarot and you've got a favorite deck, please pop it into the comments. I'd love to hear more about it. So I, 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 I kind of, I tend to agree with that. Our, um, our ancestors, our passed over loved ones, they're still just people. Um, they might know a bigger picture than what we're seeing at the time. It's like a really, um, it's like a really close friend who can see an outside view of what you're going through and give you some very solid um, advice and insight. Um, so it's always going to be from love and it's always going to be from a place of supporting you. Like, I can't tell you how many times my grandma has told me to get up and walk. And I just, I won't do it. I haven't done it yet. Not that I won't do it. Um, <laughs> so that's an example of where I should probably be taking advice from my guides. But I haven't yet. Um, so, um, but, the, you know, she has a better understanding of what is um, going on in my life and knows that that is something that I need more in my life. I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, dog, Lily. She wants to be part of the show, too. Um, but I think our spirit guides, um, even though they're they're just people, too, they like they they've got a bigger picture of our master plan. And so they can, they can, and I'll say, well, I'll go more into this next week, but because they've got a bigger picture of our master plan, some of the insights that they have might be a, um, a little bit more poignant um, at that time. Jen, I love this deck. This was exactly the deck I had in mind when I said more modern decks that met, um, that follow the same uh, writer weight uh, equation. This is a beautiful deck. Um, that I have. I, I, I should have brought it out to share tonight. Very good. Yeah, uh, Kelly, absolutely. I have heard pendulums 
to be able to balance chakra as well. So depending on the qualities of the pendulum and the stone of the pendulum and the chakra and where you're about to align it, um, using those to balance, uh, ener or your, balance your energy or your chakras um, is, is pretty potent, absolutely. Okay. Um, so if you don't have a pendulum and you want to work with a pendulum, a couple of things that you can do is you can take a necklace with a pen, uh, with a pendant. And, um, I've used that as a pendulum before. Um, I've also taken a ring and put it, put thread or string and hung it from thread or string to work as a pendulum before. And those both work um, as quick fixes um, for pendulums. So no, Jen, I don't personally use dowsing rods, but that's on my list to cover tonight. So dowsing rods, you can actually make your own dowsing rod. You can order them online on Amazon, or you can make your own from coat hangers, the, um, the wire coat hangers. And dowsing rods um, were actually a lot of rural places would use dowsing rods to find um, underlying water lines when they were trying to dig for wells. Um, I know that that was actually, that's actually a big thing out here in Ohio um, back before they had equipment to actually show you where the water, um, underground water lines are. But they look like L-shaped um, items. I wish I had a picture of one, but um, the, the handle is usually about this big and then uh, the length of it usually comes out this long or so. And they're just, um, they're meant to be held by the short end while the long end loosely swings to and, um, to and fro in front of you. And you're supposed to hold them very loosely, almost as if they would fall out, um, if you, um, shook them too much. So uh, in like in, in uh, paranormal investigations, you can actually use dowsing rods to show you where the energy is at um, or verify, you know, what you're picking up on in a room. And as you kind of go toward or you start to swing around, um, they'll kind of go in and out. And then all of a sudden you might hit an energy hotspot and they'll just go in on themselves. And they'll stop right there. And so that's one of the ways that you can use um, dowsing rods uh, to, to like work with energy, right? This is all energy work. Uh, in a setting, you can do, you know, yes, going in, no, going out. And uh, like a pendulum, you can use the dowsing rods to um, have the spirits work with the energy around the dowsing rods and ask those yes or no questions and see what kind of answers you get um, from you know, that experience. Yes, yes. Um, that I, I usually, when I was dowsing for water, I would find a stick that looked like a, a Y. Um, well, I can't do it because <laughs> camera's inverted and it's too difficult for me but basically it looks like a wishbone um and what you do is you lightly hold by the two ends here with the long end sticking out away from you um and when you want to hold it very lightly because the moment that the the dowsing rod of, or the stick starts to pull down you want to let it come down and so you would just kind of walk over the land and the moment you hit a waterway line, it would start to pull directly down. And so that the, the long end of the stick was pointing down at your feet. And that was supposed to be where um, you'd want to dig the well around in that general area. Yeah, very good. I don't know how you would, I don't know if you, I've never experimented with using a stick for yes or no questions, but I think it could be done. Uh I have heard people using candle flames to experiment with yes or no questions. Um, basically, a still flame is one answer, whereas a flickering flame is another. Um, I haven't experimented with that um, specifically, but it's something I actually want to try. I think it would be a lot of fun. 
Let's see. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Danny, what kind of experience did you guys have? Was that with uh, investigations or outside uh, individually? That's awesome. Um, so other divination tools that are um, a little bit more modern that we may not consider as divination tools that are really popular in paranormal investigation um, sources. There is this guy, the K2 EMF detector. Um, when you turn it on, oh, you can't really see it. When you turn it on, all the lights turn on. And then as it gets closer to electronic interference or electromagnetic interference, the lights across will actually light up. And uh, Greg and, and Danny and I actually um, had experiences with this before in our last investigation together. So the way that this works is um, spirits can emit an electromagnetic force that is picked up on this device. And you can ask yes or no questions with this. Now, the really cool way to work with your divination on this is that, especially in a paranormal investigation, as you're getting or as you're uh, asking and receiving answers for these yes or no questions, always, what are you feeling? Try and be in a place. Um, thanks, Jen. I will try that. Um, let's see. Will it? No. A mm, little bit. So you can see how it's flickering just a little bit. Um, we'll just hold it here and see if anyone wants to come by. But um, as you're getting responses to these yes or no questions, what are you feeling and what are you sensing? What are you hearing? So when we talk about our psychic abilities, there we have five senses. Um, we have five senses, taste, feel, smell, sight, and sound. I think it's all five. Uh, for, every, for every sense that we have physically, there is a heightened sense to match that. They're called the clairs, clairaudient, clairaliance, um, clairvoyant, clairsentience. Um, so we can, um, as we're working with things like the EMF detector or the K2, we can actually look into our clairs and check in with our five senses and ask ourselves, is there anything that I'm perceiving here? Um, that could be a, a drop in the temperature. That could be a thought. I've been in an investigation before where I heard something in my head seconds before someone repeated it across the room. Um, they didn't realize what they were repeating, but I had to validate, wow, I, you know, I heard that too. Um, it's really important to just tune in to your abilities and be able to take these experiences to um, a more psychic level. You can um, play around with this equipment at a graveyard, um, a cemetery, known paranormal hotspots. Um, I was just reading today in Ohio where there's a lot of, um, because there's like two major rivers that go through central Ohio. Um, there's a lot of trails around those rivers. Uh, and there have been some experiences there. So I was thinking about taking my K2 there and just seeing what I pick up at. There's all sorts of ways to take the responses that you're getting from these devices and see what sensations you're picking up on. And I think consistency, practice, and patience are the main are the main um, factors with this. Uh, and just kind of tuning in and continuing to log and journal. If you don't like the word journal, like log your or document your research, right? As a scientist of the paranormal and your abilities, it would you know be beneficial to have those notes to rely on back or in the future. Um, same with voice recorders. Um, we, we get a lot of um, EVPs. Um, 
while we're out in the field. So uh, it's often that someone might hear something or feel something before they record something that they will catch later. So documenting timestamps, what you're hearing or what you're seeing in the field and being able to bump that up against the research later. I think there's a lot of opportunity there to notice your impressions and tying it back to these tools. Oh, that's a good point. There's a lot of energy around railroads too. I can't get my mouse to work. But there are, you're right, rivers and railroads, like they just have a lot of, I think it's the metal in the, the railroads that attracts all of that energy. And it's definitely the water and the rivers um, and the, the energy of, of, the, of the moving water that definitely um, gets the energy popping. So... Awesome. Um, there are a lot of tools we didn't get to talk to tonight. Uh, things like Ouija boards. Um, let's see, what do we? Uh, things like reading tea leaves, or I've heard reading candle wax. Um, those are all forms of divination uh, that have their own little special uh, nuances. I'm not familiar with uh, reading I can't speak to reading candle wax, um, but I know tea leaves is really more about, um, you know, loose tea leaves. And what images do you see in the tea leaves left in the bottom of your cup after you drink the tea? So uh, that's another great way to practice and strengthen your intuition and your creative eye um, and being able to pick up on some of the messages there. So those have been some of my experiences with using uh, divination tools out in the real world. Um, <laughs> that's right, I did. <laughs> Truth bump it up. <laughs> Those have been some of my experiences. Um, uh, around using divination tools and how to tap that back into my intuition and constantly practicing with my intuition and strengthening and flexing that muscle. So I hope this is giving you some really great examples tonight on different things that you can use and how to always be questioning what am I experiencing and looking at it from an unbiased and objective view, but being wise enough to question things that don't quite make sense, always in the name of research and better understanding of ourselves, the paranormal and the other side. Um, that is the show for tonight. Next week, I want to return back here and talk more about spirit guides and our past loved ones on the other side. So a lot of the questions that you guys were asking earlier tonight about um, the quality of messages that we get from the other side we'll cover next week. And we'll also go into some experiences or some examples of how you can practice reaching out to your own spirit guides and getting to uh, start a relationship with them. So um, thank you all. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Jen, I did forget runes. Um, but I'll pop back into the show and, and place a quick description about runes in the comments. Thank you, everyone, tonight. Please return back here tomorrow. Um, oh, no, I can't. I don't think Greg has got a show this week. But usually it's Shadow Hour on Friday. I think he's taking this week off. Um, but we're, you know, uh, got Jen's show um, on Jen Hudson's Psychic Medium uh, channel for Simply Spirit. And I uh, can't wait to see you back here again next week for Truth Bumps to cover spirit guides, who they are, and how to contact them. Everyone have a beautiful evening. I love you all. Thank you so much for the fantastic time. Take care.